Now it's time for our weekly market update with Catherine Murray, host of The Buck Stops Here. Take it away, Catherine. All yours. Thanks, Nima. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weekly Market Recap. I'm Catherine Murray. Well, we are watching U.S. markets move higher today following Thursday's strength. We're building on top of that. And the S&P 500 looks to be up by about 20% since uh, on the 52-week low. So since the 52-week low, we're actually up 20% on the S&P 500. Um, and we're also on pace to see a first close above that all-important key technical level, 4,300 on the S&P 500. That's been a key resistance level that a lot of investors have been watching and really just watching a bit of a range-bound market. The bottom line, why is this happening? Why are we seeing a bit of an upside here or that continued momentum? Um, it seems as though there's more buy-in that perhaps uh, the worst is behind us and that there are some opportunities within the marketplace. Uh, it is a very much risk on field of the market right now, likely on the back of as well, U.S. economic resilience. Interestingly, this week, if you didn't catch it, I'd highly recommend you find this article. Uh, it was in the Wall Street Journal front page, in fact, discussing where is this recession that we've all been waiting for for the past 15 months? So in other words, maybe we muddle through a little bit and some of the economic indicators are actually better than feared. As I said, it's a risk on day in the market and has been, uh, and you can see that under underneath the surface of the broader market. So in other words, move away from some of those big tech companies and look at what's going on underneath, and you will see that the cyclicals are performing very well, as well as the small cap companies. Those are both uh, positive and bullish indicators for the broader sentiment. The bearish call, of course, in the market has not changed, uh, which is that we have liquidity headwinds, of course, in part stemming from not only the U.S. Federal Reserve raising rates by 500 basis points in one year alone. That has not happened in 50 years other than in the early 80s. Uh, but the difference then is that we went from 12 percent up to 17 percent. We're coming off of a very low basis, that being zero. Uh, so we've got headwinds from that potentially, and then also, of course, the, uh, the regional banks in the United States. We know that story very well. So that's the bearish call, but clearly right now the bulls are in the driver's seat. Uh, in terms of a couple of stocks to watch, some interesting stories here. Uh, GM and Tesla, they announced a uh, partnership of sorts, a collaboration to integrate the North American charging uh, standard connector design. That obviously would help GM. Tesla stock is up by about 5% on this news, GM up by about 2% or so. Um, we've also seen Netflix performing well today. Um, their subscriptions are higher on the back of the recent crackdown of shared passwords. Uh, we're also, of course, keeping our eyes on the bullish sentiment that we're noting within the marketplace, up by about 15.5%. That's the strongest bullish sentiment that we've seen uh, since November of 2021. Getting back, though, to the uh, BOC, that was the big news here in Canada. And they did a surprise rate hike of 25 basis points. Uh, certainly surprised the market, surprised the, the bond market as well, uh, moving that two-year up to 4.6%. And expectations now from, uh, from investors that we will see a 5% number from the uh, Bank of Canada this year. There's also the view, of course, though, that they're tightening in a difficult environment for the consumer uh, and consumer debt, and therefore we will see a mild recession. Again, that appears to be consensus views. Uh, away from that and the Bank of Canada, also we heard from the Australian Bank this week, the RBA, they, they also did a surprise rate hike. And again, not only RBA, but also Canada looking at this inflation number as somewhat sticky. So we might see higher for longer. Again, we'll get a good reading in terms of what's going on in the United States on the inflation front, likely coming down, but maybe a little bit higher than higher for longer uh, might be the takeaway. Um, in terms of uh, important items to watch here in Canada this week, of course, we had the jobs numbers out this morning, very disappointing, uh, a loss of 17,000 jobs versus a gain of 20,000. And also the composition of that is very important to watch. A full time was down by 32,000 jobs, uh, a part-time increase, but of course that could be people losing their full-time job and just needing to kind of bridge a bit of a gap with part-time work. Um, away from that as well, of course, unemployment rate ticked up to 5.2%. Uh, on the earnings front, Saputo reported their most recent results, good results, but the stock is down by 10%. We're also keeping our eyes on private equity company Onyx, which is publicly traded. Um, that was upgraded today and uh, over at CBC, price target moves to $88 from 70. And next week, we're going to be watching pretty closely a couple of economic indicators as well, uh, manufacturing as well as home sales. And lastly, uh, just an update here, uh, the Trudeau Foundation board member did say that the donation that was given to the foundation, Trudeau's foundation, from a Chinese company has in fact been returned. 
Nima, I'll leave it there. Back to you. And that was Catherine Murray, host of The Buck Stops Here, with Forum Daily's weekly market update.